Zombies, those things that are humanish, seem mindless and generally desire to fulfill one basic instinctual need, to eat. They may be a metaphor for many a cultural ills, class warfare, racism, global warming, etc. While they don't exist in reality yet, we're getting a bit more creative. So today, in continuation of our Halloween theme, we're visiting the fantastical world of make-believe by examining the neuroscience of zombies. The first question you may have is if zombies even have brains to begin with. And the answer is simply yes, they do. In many examples in literature or other areas of entertainment, the only means of killing a zombie is to damage the brain. So now that that's settled science, what exactly is a zombie? Well, according to neuroscientists, the clinical term for zombieism is consciousness deficit hypoactivity disorder, or CDHD, which is characterized by a reduction in brain activity resulting in a lack of full consciousness, but exhibiting aggressive behaviors particularly surrounding hunger. Symptoms of CDHD include death, followed by antisocial behavior towards living human beings, but prosocial behavior towards other CDHD patients in the form of swarms and hordes. Symptoms also include the inability to produce and even understand language, memory impairments, aggressiveness, insatiable hunger, lethargy, lack of control over intentional movements or actions, facial and object recognition deficits, and finally, sleeping difficulties including insomnia. According to available data on CDHD, two variants or subtypes have been seen, and these subtypes correspond to particular brain abnormalities. CDHD1 is the subtype you may immediately recognize. People with this subtype are slow moving and uncoordinated. They show signs of a kinesthesia, that is severe fatigue and lethargic movements. Once infected, the variant will produce CDHD in minutes, hours, or even longer. Alternatively, the CDHD2 variant shows little, if any, signs of mobility impairments. In fact, this variant can pick up some speed. Further, once infected, people with CDHD2 subtype will produce symptoms in mere seconds. The manifestation and time of symptom onset of these two subtypes subtypes have led researchers to believe that CDHD is a total brain disease. This is when I'm going to get a bit more technical, but once I finish, you'll understand why CDHD, or as is known colloquially, zombieism, is a brain-based disorder. According to researchers, the subtypes differ due to how long the brain was deprived of oxygen before resurrection occurred. The longer the brain was deprived of oxygen, the more the brain was damaged. The CDHD1 variant accompanies more brain damage due to the amount of time it takes to turn than the CDHD2 variant. That being said, let's take a look at the brain areas most impacted in patients with CDHD. There appears to be widespread damage to the ventral temporal lobe. Injury to the fusiform gyrus results in impairments in facial recognition, that's prosopagnosia, while damage to the superior temporal sulcus, the STS, results in the inability to process emotional content of faces. Thus, both variants of CDHD lose the ability to recognize and have an emotional connection to people they once knew. Check out our video on the capgrass delusion. Insults to the temporal parietal junction results in the inability to comprehend language, that's fluent of Damage to the hippocampus, located in the medial temporal lobe, results in the inability to form memories enabling spatial navigation, which accounts for why a zombie can get stuck in closets or in the same area for months, because they're constantly lost. Bilateral damage to the posterior parietal cortex is caused by CDHD1 infection, resulting in impairments in spatial attention, impacting both motor control and coordination. The CDHD2 subtype does not seem to have damage to this area of the brain. The frontal lobes are severely damaged in those with CDHD resulting in a host of behavioral and functional problems, including the inability to control the impulsive and emotionally mediated limbic system, particularly the amygdala, resulting in aggressiveness, since the orbital frontal cortex is severely impaired. Also, diagnosticians have incorrectly assumed that those suffering from CDHD don't feel pain, but their pain centers appear to be intact. It's the damage to the cingulate cortex in the frontal lobe that disrupts the pain pathways. Thus, CDHD sufferers feel pain, they just don't care about it. Issues in coordination seen in CDHD1 subtype is a result of widespread damage to the cerebellum. Moreover, these patients exhibit a wide stance, lumbering gait, and difficulty reaching for or grasping objects. Because these symptoms are largely absent in the CDHD2 subtype, neuroscientists believe that the cerebellum is unaffected in this variant of the disease. Researchers note that CDHD patients have severe insomnia and constant issues with their sleep-wake cycle, and it's the damage caused by the disease to the hypothalamus that is responsible for the symptom. 
The archaeate nucleus of the hypothalamus is also impaired. This area is responsible for signaling to the body that it isn't hungry. Damage to this area is largely responsible for the insatiable hunger drive seen in patients with CDHD. The final brain area that succumbs to CDHD is the superior colliculus of the midbrain as sufferers fail to evoke reflexive responses. Hence, you never see a zombie react reflexively, like a reflexive blink to something flying in their face in order to avoid damage to their eye. Studies have led researchers to believe that CDHD is a total brain disease. Damage to the ventral injury to the fusiform gyrus, superior temporal, temporal parietal junction to the hippocampus, damage to the cerebellum is a total brain disease. As there is no cure for CDHD, scientists recommend the following proven survival skills to help increase your chances of surviving an encounter with zombies. First, scientists recommend to avoid fighting, as they do not process pain normally. So if you inflict damage to any part of their body that is not their brain, they will continue to attack. Another tip is to hide. Due to damage to the temporal and parietal lobes, those with CDHD have severe memory and intentional impairments. So if they're pursuing you and you stay hidden and quiet, they're likely to forget what they were doing and move on to something else that catches their attention. Next, as you probably can gather, those with CDHD are highly distractible. So if you are in a position to cause a distraction and then get the hell out of Dodge, this is likely to work to your benefit, thus ensuring your survival. This next tip applies to the CDHD1 variant. Due to their severe motor impairments, you can outrun them. But do keep in mind that although they're lumbering along, they don't stop moving. So assure that you have plenty of distance between you and the zombie horde before you rest. Another thing you'll want to avoid is attempting to reason with CDHD patients. They have profound language deficits, to the point where they're unable to comprehend and in most cases produce language. And finally, you can always try mimicry by joining the zombie horde yourself. CDHD patients suffer from prosopagnosia, facial recognition blindness due to damage to the ventral visual stream. Thus, they can only recognize other CDHD patients via auditory, hearing, and or olfactory smell cues. So dress and sound like a CDHD patient because you want to act like a zombie like your life depends on it. As mentioned, CDHD is incurable, but science not only has been able to explain why those with the disease behave a certain way, but also how to survive an encounter with these patients based on malfunctions in their brains that prevent them from being able to attack you more effectively. There's much more that I didn't cover about the neuroscience of zombies, so if you want to learn more, the link to the book, Do Zombies Dream of Undead Sheep? A Neuroscientific View of the Zombie Brain is available in the description box. Not a sponsor. I found this book fascinating, and I read it in less than a day. And you don't even need to have a neuroscience background to understand the material. That being said, make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more like this or other videos in the realm of both science and science fiction.